Hello, everybody. Wel welcome to another day of winter in our spring. Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order. This is a budget hearing. Um, could we all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could I please have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? That motion passes 600. Zero, zero. Um, the notice of the annual meeting is printed in <coughs> the newspaper. I will read the, um, the proposed uh, budget and the propositions. Polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. For the purpose of adopting the school budget for the 2019-2020 school year, purchasing of buses, and electing three members to the Board of Education. The Board of Education of Lansing Central Schools presents the budget below to be voted on May 21st, 2019. Proposition number one, that the Board of Education of Lansing Central School District be and hereby is authorized to expend the sum set forth of $30 million, $794,650, to the levy the necessary tax therefore. <coughs> Proposition two, that the Lansing Central School District is hereby authorized to purchase and finance student transport vehicles and expend a total sum not to exceed $350,000, which is estimated to be the total maximum cost thereof. And said amount, or so much thereof as may be necessary, shall be raised by the levy of a tax upon the taxable property of said school district and collected in annual installments as provided by section 416 of the education law and in anticipation of such tax obligations of said school district and the principal amount not to exceed $350,000 shall be issued. This year's Board of Education candidates are Aaron Thompson, Linda Pasto, Susan Tabrizi, and Kristen Hopkins and there um, could be write-ins. Um, now we'll have the presentation of the 2019-2020 proposed budget with Superintendent Chris Pedagrasso and business official Kate Heath. Thank you. And uh, thank you for coming tonight. It's nice to have um, more people here for the budget, budget hearing. Um, I'm going to get right into uh, enrollment because enrollment and student demographics really uh, drives our our budget and any of our changes from year to year. So as you can see, this is from 2013, 2014 up till uh, this current school year. And our enrollment has been steadily increasing. If I went back to 2007, we're around uh, 1,200 students and then there was a dip, a dip and now we're headed back up. At RC Buckley, in the last uh, nine, nine to ten years, you see a big increase from around 400 students to 460 students currently. And what we're starting to see, which is nice, is more of a stabilization of class size between the 90 and 100, instead of having big dips from year to year. Lansing Middle School, uh, from 337 to 382. They're starting to uh, have those big classes are starting to enter middle school and starting to uh, be a little more consistent with class size at the middle school as well. In Lansing High School, you'll see the class size th uh, 329 right now. Um, this is building, but for the entire building. You'll start to see that increase. These are the low, low numbers from uh, the 2008, 2009 started moving up and shifting out and they'll, they'll be graduating in uh, the high school. You'll start to sh shift to around uh, the 350s, 360s again. As we start to look at our demographics, we see an increase in diversity. So these are pretty much all, these are the, the, what's listed for New York State Education Department for uh, race and ethnicity. You see our highest is in the area of multiracial and a significant change from 2010 to 2018, 19. What it looks, um, the rust color, the brown color, that's what's called, what's white. 
the biggest increase again is the two or more and um, it's gone from from 2007 to 2000 this is the last data is 2017 in 2007 we had nine we were 93 percent uh, considered white and now we're at 83 uh, percent considered white with more diversity and I'll show you broken down by building we'll see we'll see the majority of the uh, shifting upward is actually at the elementary level and there's two reasons why that's the first time uh, families identify and that continues on unless you make an intentional change and it was around the 2010-11 time period when uh, multiracial became into play it was you had to choose a, a black or white or Hispanic prior to that so uh, there was multiracial was didn't was not in existence so as our students are entering kindergarten um, they're selecting multiracial and some of our families in the up, up, upper grades as well. We have seen an increase in our students in English uh, language as English language learners. We're at 17 at this point. There's a list of all the languages that are spoken by our students uh, as native language. I make note of this because uh, there's uh, we have proposed and um, and then a shift in how we provide ESL services or uh, ELL services. And you'll see, as I'll talk a little bit later, that this is a uh, part of the strategic planning for New York State Education Department as well. This is something we've been paying uh, quite, quite a bit of attention to over the years. I know these numbers are difficult to see, but over in this area is a free and reduced lunch, and right here is a reduced lunch. And in 2007, we had just under 5% of our student body were, had received reduced lunch, and about 12, just under 12% received free lunch. Looking in 2017, actually free re lunch reduced a little bit. The students we, um, that popped up to free lunch were at 21% free lunch now. And actually this year's data, the 2018 data, is at 25%. So that has been a significant change in our demographic uh, part of that has been in, an increased um, awareness and uh, push from our, our um, food services department to make sure that families have the information they need to sign up for free and reduced lunch. There are three components of the um, Every Student Succeeds, Succeeds Act, and it's really all about advancing um, equities in public education. And we have uh, two blueprints. One is a blueprint for English language learner success, and that's really about training all of our, our faculty and staff on uh, best practices of instruction for English language learners and also for students with disability. And most recently, and you've seen over this year, I hope that we've paid quite a bit of attention to social emotional learning standards that our classroom teachers and our health teachers and our guidance counselors and social workers have to implement. So as, we, as you can see through the uh, budget pieces of the presentation, this is really where any th time we're asking for um, an increase in service, it's in these three areas, which is directly connected to what the state is requiring from us and what we're seeing for our student need. As a district, our goals are always to support and enhance our student programs while maintain a stability in our finances so we're not seeing big gaps, ups, ups and downs, while minimizing my, our tax levy increase. And I hope you can see that throughout uh, the budget piece of the presentation that Kate will be doing. So just to review, the first proposition you'll see on the ballot uh, pertains to the budget amount. We're looking to expend $30,794,650. That's an increase over last year of 727000 And I'm kind of going to get into later where that money is going. The second proposition is for school buses. We're looking to purchase three 70 passenger school buses. We are trying to maintain our fleet, so as our buses get older, we are replacing them. We're on a 10 year program for those buses. So just an overview. Um, the proposed budget is a 2.42% increase over last year. We are under the tax cap at 2.84%. We could have got up to 2.94%. And the estimated tax rate increase is at 0.84%, so less than a percent increase for your tax rate. Um, that won't be finalized until this summer when the final assessment rolls come out. For more details, oops, you can go back. There's a link at the bottom of this, and this will be on our website to get the detailed budget proposal that has all of the line-by-line -line items. 
So where is the money going? Um, we're maintaining all our programs at last year's level, but we're also increasing. So we're adding an FTE elementary teacher. As Chris showed in our enrollment numbers, numbers are increasing, and so we're adding some personnel to the elementary school. We're also adding a special education classroom because as our special services needs increase, um, we have a higher need at the elementary level. And currently, BOCES does not have programs that address that age level. So we're adding a program in-house. We're also making two shifts from BOCES for our director of curriculum and our ESL teacher. Um, again, those are things that Chris addressed earlier as we're looking at social emotional learning. We need more time in-house for the curriculum piece of that. And our ELL numbers or ESL numbers are increasing as well. Um, and we're continuing to look at the student supply list and continuing to reduce the um, need for families to supply their kids' needs in the schools and taking up those costs. So our budget every year is primarily made up of salaries and benefits. So that's our largest increase here. Um, again, we're increasing some materials and supplies as we're picking up some of those costs. Um, we're seeing the decrease in BOCES again because we're bringing some of those services back in-house. Um, we have some debt falling off and some of our contractual services are decreasing. Uh, as it should be, primarily 50% of our budget goes to instruction and then to employee benefits is another 26%. So over 75% is for employees, our staff, our faculty, their benefits, and all the supplies. Um, the rest goes to operations and maintenance, transportation, and then the district support. So the things that we need in the background to make our schools run. And this is just kind of a chart showing the comparison from 1819 to 1920. Again, you can see those increases in salary, benefits, and then, then the decreases in BOCES and the slight decrease in debt service and contractual. So we also show the budget in a three-part component, administrative, program, and capital. And so that just kind of categorizes where the expenses are. So this is just a brief overview. 75% um, typically is where program is. That has been pretty steady over the years. And then the rest is in to administrative and capital. And then I go into this in a little bit of detail to just kind of talk about what these different components include. So your administrative includes general support and management, legal, auditing, all the finance pieces, um, administration and supervision of the buildings and all of their clerical support. So you can see those numbers there. Um, we're having a slight increase here. We're kind of shuffling the way that our admin are categorized. So some of our um, administrative pieces were teachers on special assignment in previous years and that's been a shift towards more of an admin role. Um, so it's not really an increase in cost, but it's a change in where they're allocated in the budget. The program component includes salaries for teaching staff, instructional programs, um, transportation is actually located in here, um, and we support the whole student in this part of the, the budget. Um, it's athletics, it's health services, extracurricular, everything's included in this program budget. So you can see this is where the bulk of our money is. Um, we're looking at next year at 23 $2 million out of the $30 million is in programs that goes directly towards the student education. Um, your capital piece is equipment, supplies, and materials for the operation and maintenance of the district. So maintaining our buses, uh, maintaining our vans, the maintenance equipment, tractors, plowing, all those pieces are in this, this piece. Um, payments on principal and interest for our debt service is located here. Um, judgments and claims, we don't really have many of those, but occasionally we do have to do a slight refund on real property taxes if there's been adjustments, and that's located here as well. This is just kind of a pie chart showing where the pieces of the budget fall, and again, primarily program. So where does the money come from? Um, I'll start out looking at state and federal sources. Um, our state aid is increasing from year over year, about 300,000. Our BOCES aid is seeing a slight increase and our federal aid has been slowly increasing. That federal aid is related to Medicaid um, payments from the government. Um, our local sources, this is where our taxes, our payment in lieu of taxes, um, our pieces from fund balance, so we appropriate money out of fund balance towards the budget. 
and our miscellaneous. Uh, the bulk of our miscellaneous um, are things like uh, tuition from other schools, our tuition from our employees who pay tuition for their students to attend. Um, typically we see a refund from both season here as they um, relook at the cost from the previous year and give us back money that was um, spent too highly. Um, and you can see we're looking to increase our taxes by about $500,000 um, to help support the budget. So this is just another chart showing the increases to give you a visual. And then I looked at the tax rate over the last five years just to kind of show you um, how stable the tax rate has been. We saw a slight decrease back in 16, 17, and then we've been under a percent for the last three years now. And again, the actual tax rate won't be calculated until the summer of 2019. And then I wanted to show, I was looking at some information regarding the taxable full value, because a lot of times the ability to keep our tax rate stable is related to the assessed values within the district. To just show you what our increases have been recently, comparing them to other districts locally, you can see the last couple years we've seen some significant increases compared to our neighbors. So last year was a 4.8% increase and the year before it was 56 I thought this was interesting to look back historically at what of our assessed values have been. So back in 2010 when the financial crisis hit um, for both the housing market and state aid, we saw a huge decrease in our assessed values and you can see that that's slowly and steadily been increasing. Um, currently we're projecting for next year another $20 million increase in assessed values. Um, recently, have there been some changes made to STAR? Um, if you currently receive your STAR benefit as a reduction on your school tax bill, which is the STAR exemption, you may receive a greater benefit if you switch to the STAR credit, which is when you receive a check instead. Um, and the requirements for that have changed. It used to be up to 500000 You could get the STAR exemption. If your income was up to five hundred. now it's 250000 so if you earn more than 250000 you're required to go to the STAR credit instead of the exemption. Um, if you're under the 250000 you have the option. Since that's new this year, I just wanted to point that out um, so people may see a change. Here's where our basic STAR and enhanced STAR have ended up. Um, basic STAR is up to $631. Enhanced STAR is up to $1,031. And here's... Um, the savings you may see depending on your own personal income and your house values. And again, the 20.92 is an estimated tax rate. Oh. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, that's my son. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens if the proposed budget is defeated? Um, there's three options. We can put up the same proposal for another vote. We can put up a revised budget for vote, or we can go straight to a contingent budget. Um, the, if the second proposed budget, whether it's the same or revised, is defeated, we then must adopt a contingent budget. So what is a contingent budget? Um, it very carries various restrictions on equipment <coughs> purchases, the use of buildings by the community, um, any salary increases that are not contractually obligated, we cannot increase those salaries. But the major impact which was a change when the tax cap came into law, was that we cannot increase the tax levy at all. So it would be a zero dollar increase and a zero percent increase. Um, that would mean our contingent budget would require a reduction of $560,000 from what the proposed budget is. Here's just a review of the process. The Board of Education voted on this budget in April. Um, it's coming to the public for a vote on May 21st. In July, the assessment office finalizes the tax roll, typically right around July 1st, and then we can calculate the tax rate based on those assessments. And in August, I give the um, levy to the board to approve. Uh, we do have four candidates running for the Board of Education. There are a total of three seats. Two of those seats have a term of July 1, 2019 through June 30th, 2022. 
the and we have one seat that is a vacant seat and it would be the continuation of that term which is right after the vote starts begins on May 22nd and will end on June 30th 2021 that the person that reads receives the third least amount of votes would receive that that seat Voter, voter qualifications, you must be a citizen of the United States, 18 or more years of age, a resident of the district for a period of 30 days preceding the day of the vote, and you must be a registered voter. And there, here are some ways to register, to register with the Tompkins County Board of Elections, either by mail or in person, register at the office of the district clerk, which is uh, the superintendent's office, Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. through two, uh, Thursday, May 16th, or you can register on the day of the vote. However, if you choose this option, you will not be able to vote on that day, but we'll be able to vote every other uh, future ele elections held at the district. The vote is on Tuesday, May 21st, uh, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Right here in the Teacher Center, you will be voting on three things. Proposition number one, the budget amount. Proposition number two, school buses. And number three will be the three Board of Education seats. And you'll be voting on three people for those seats. Questions? <laughs> um, I think my first question has to do with the power plan and the devaluation, which has been an issue for many years now. But considering the fact that it's down to a relatively low figure and the uh, assessed value keeps going up, it sort of overwhelms the decrease the amount that, that is left in the pilot agreement. Is that really a super concern to the district still, or are you just sort of, is that, does that keep you up at night like it used to, or is it sort of, <laughs> it sort of calm down to the point you don't need to worry so much about it? Well, I think in previous years, I would have had three or four slides on the PowerPoint itself, or power, power uh, plant itself. Um, no, we're not as um, concerned as we have been previously. We are, there is concern there, of course, and we do meet regularly with the uh, plant owners to help to have conversations so we can plan as best as we can. Uh, but um, I don't think that it's a dire situation as it has been in the past. Part of this also, because the um, plant itself was such a big piece of our, uh, our tax base, we were able to, I believe, have a better um, understanding of what the tax rate might be in the future. That might be shifting a little bit because we don't know this full assessment until August. So we might not have as, as good of a planning as that, although Kate works very closely with Jay Franklin um, for that. But um, it does shift things a little bit. Thank you. I have more, but somebody else can go. <laughs> Um, I have questions here that actually aren't my questions. They're from an anonymous source who couldn't be here tonight. And so I can't, and actually I couldn't go to the website today because it was down all day. So I couldn't, so I couldn't go online and try to check what, what the person was even asking about. So my apologies if I can. I think we all it. shared an equal frustration with the website. It was a regional, it wasn't a, it was a regional issue. But the question is you're taking, um, Let's see, you're, you're, you're estimating you're going to spend a little over $29 million this year, the year we're currently in, and you're, you're going to take in revenues of about almost exactly a million dollars more than that, $30 million. And you're appropriating $275,000. So what happens to the other $725,000? How is it reflected in the budget? Those are estimates. Um, we won't know exactly what our expenses come in until closer to the end of the year, and that's a decision that the Board of Education will have to make as we get some final numbers. Um, Chris and I will be looking at that and making some recommendations. Um, one of the things that we always look at is our capital reserve. Um, we're depleting that in our next project pretty significantly, so we'll be looking to build that back up, and then the Board will make a decision on what we do. Uh, there's a, a mention, and again, I can't tell you exactly where it is, for undistributed uh, benefits, for employee benefits, there's another category of $10,000, and we're curious what that's related to. That's related to um, 
it's actually Omni. Um, it's our retirement incentive is where that, if we have retirement incentive, that's where we pay out of. So we budget 10,000 for that every year. Sometimes it comes in higher, sometimes it comes in lower, um, depending on how many retirements we have. We also have a retirement reserve that we can offset that expense from if we need to. Uh, under in instruction, I actually have a line for this, 2020-150. Um, there, there's an ex expense goes from $417,000 uh, up to $490,000, I guess, on this budget, and the one four hundred ninety was actually spent. And then it goes back down to 458000 And so the question is, what was related to that $73,000 increase? And you said 2020 150? Yes. Um, again, I think I talked earlier about how we've been taking a hard look at how we code or where, what budget code we take some of our expenses from for salaries. Um, some piece, if you're looking at the line by line budget, it's a little bit difficult. Um, we have some new reporting requirements next year that require us to break down our salaries for administration by building where they haven't been in the past. So where it used to be all our administrators mm. were in one line, they're now in three, perhaps four, depending on if it's a, like our director of curriculum is in a district-wide code and each principal is in their own code. Um, and so are the dean of students, where previously they may have been coded to their teacher salary code. I have recoded them back over to the, the admin piece of their position is in the admin code. Uh, under teacher substitutes, there was a budgeted amount of 148000 and an actual expenses here of 250000 And again, that's a reason for the, the, the increase. We, if you look at what we spent this year, our substitute teacher salary was a lot higher. We had a, an increased need um, for substitutes, especially in the elementary building, as our needs have increased throughout the year. We've had to add some staffing. Um, part of that was long-term substitutes. We had a lot of people out on leave this year, so they come out of that code as well. So you'll, if you look at the teacher code, that's a little bit less than we anticipated. So that was a shift from where it was spent from. Uh, under one of the general codes, 1989, there's a $4,000 uh, expense for uh, consultants. Again, can you tell us what the consultant was about? I don't know that off the top of my head. I can look and certainly get back to you. And I'll get back to the anonymous questioner. <laughs> um, under the transportation office, under secretary, there's a budgeted amount of 31700 and an expense this year of over 50000 And again, uh, is there a reason for the increase? We added a 19A certified instructor to transportation mid-year um, to help with our training and certifications of our bus drivers. It was something that in the past we had contracted out and we decided it was more prudent to have it in-house to train as needed as opposed to trying to schedule it intermittently throughout the year. Uh, here's a really easy question. Um, how was the tax cap calculated? <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's nothing really easy about that. Um, <laughs> so you take your previous year tax levy, you apply a tax growth rate, then you apply the CPI, which um, the consumer price index, which this year happened to be 2%, and previous years it's been lower. Um, you take out your pilots, then you add back in your pilots. It, it's fairly complicated. Um, if someone wants detailed information, I'll certainly be happy to share it with you. Um, I th think there's a piece in the budget newsletter about it. Um, but it's a 14-step calculation that um, looks at our capital um, expenses and our pilots and it takes all those pieces into play. Sounds much easier than state aid calculation, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's at least followable. <laughs> um, you may have mentioned this in the presentation, but as far as your, your number of, of teachers, um, how does that, if you go back like two or three years to the, to the budget coming up, how does that what are the numbers? How many full-time or full-time equivalent teachers have you had and will you have in the budget coming up? I can certainly look that up. I don't have that handy. Um, our teachers did go down. Our staffing overall went down um, when we lost some significant state aid 
and our enrollments went down, they, we did have to reduce them. And as our enrollments are increasing, we have increased them. Last year, we added um, at least two positions that I can think of off the top of my head for um, mental health purposes. We added a social worker and a psychologist. And so we're constantly looking at enrollment and need versus um, our staffing to make sure that we're adequately staffed but not overstaffed. And uh, the budget includes a full-time dean of students. And what does that person do? What are their responsibilities? Uh, the dean of students, uh, we have one at each building. And um, typically, they're working with students, uh, students and families. That's their main role, is to uh, support students and to um, help support the social emotional learning in the, in the district. And uh, a little different at each level. We have support, student support teams at each building. Um, there's a implementation of the PBIS at the middle school. And um, really, in, at the elementary school, uh, that person is going in the classrooms or providing interventions. It's really just student support. I'm, I'm sorry for running out of things to ask. Um, there was a comment. You mentioned the night that on Proposition 2, the $350,000, uh, it's for three 72-person buses. The person who read it, I guess maybe online, said the proposition didn't say anything about what it was for, just the amount. Is that that is correct. The proposition was um, vague in case we need a, have a need for a handicap bus. We try to keep that open. So if for some reason we only need, we need to get a, a bus that has handicap accessibility or wheelchair lift, then we would get one bus and one with a wheelchair lift because those are significantly more expensive. So the proposition itself just mentions a total? Yes. Yep. Okay, who else? Mm -hmm. I have a question. What was, what's the difference between having the third least vo votes or the third highest votes? For the, I think you said least. Right. The, uh, the first so you'll have the highest votes. Uh, the first two highest votes will receive the full term. And the person with the, um, there's four candidates or write-ins. So it's uh, the person with the, th the most, thir the third least amount of votes will have the three candidates that get the seat because uh, it is a two-year term, essentially, uh, instead of a full term. It's filling a vacant role. We had um, a candidate, uh, a board member that just uh, that had some uh, personal things that had to leave the board, unfortunately, and um, so we have a vacant seat because of timing. We decided not to fill the, fill the seat. Does that make sense? Well, if there are any additional questions that if you would like to send them in by email, we're welcome to answer questions right up, th right up through and um, post them. Uh, we will be posting this video uh, for and sending it out to the community. Um, but I do encourage you to, if people do have questions, we are available to answer them at any time. So thank you very much for coming. Okay. Um, so next, I'd like to introduce the board candidates, and I'll do that in the order that they appear on the um, ballot. Um, Mr. Aaron Thompson. Hi. Ms. Linda Pasto. Susan Tabrizi. Hello. And Kristen Hopkins. Okay, could I please have a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Abstentions? That motion passes 6-0-0. And following this meeting is the Meet the Candidates Night.